Anybody? What's that riff? Stones, yeah. Who plays guitar? That's Stones. Keith Richards, yeah. Talking about Keith Richards, it must have been on a Wednesday morning and I was in my shop. I, I got a call from this friend of mine, Henny. And Henny said, I got this crazy idea. Can you make an exact copy of Keith Richards' number one guitar, Me Carber? Keith calls that guitar Me Carber. And Keith, uh, Keith has names for his guitars, so it's easy to, to take one out of the rack. And Me Carber is an early 60s five string Telecaster tuned in an open chord. That's why he sounds like he does. So I said, well, as a guitar builder, I sometimes get extraordinary requests. So I said, why not? Let's take this chance. But then Henny added some words that changed the whole story so far. He said, you also have to give it to Keith. Well, and that sounded so ridiculous that I said, well, I got nothing to lose here. So why don't I give it a shot? And I did. But we're talking here about the best protected band in the world. It's easier to get into the Pentagon than into the heart of this band. Believe me, really. They got their own backstage, backstage. But yeah, real. <laughs> but first thing first, I had to make an instrument that looked like it. So. I envisioned the instrument with the information Henny provided me. He did 19 hours of research for this thing. And these hands had to do the rest. Well, then you have a guitar. And I didn't have a clue how to get this guitar inside the Rolling Stones. So what do you do? So I started searching for 900 Rolling Stones, you know, phone numbers, uh, email addresses like info at rollingstones.com. Nothing. Not a chance. No way. So things weren't looking great for weeks. Nothing happened. But then I came across a guy who knew a guy who knew a guy that knew Pierre de Beaufort. Keith Richards, number one guitar technician. And that guy, that key guy, gave me a 5% chance of meeting Pierre de Beaufort on the Pink Pop Festival in Landgraaf. And I, I live in Den Helder. <laughs> but that 5% chance was given to me on 11 o'clock in the morning on the same day that the Rolling Stones played at that Pink Pop Festival. So I had to be fast. I took a chance. I packed my stuff. I got in the car, I called Henny, I said, you never know where I'm going now. <laughs> I'm going to the Pimpio Festival. And he said, no way, no way, you're joking. And I wasn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I arrived at Landgraaf, didn't have any clue what to do or whatever, but with that key guy, that, that guy that gave me 5% chance, we managed to get backstage, but with a truckload of luck and miracles. And when I was backstage, I met Pierre de Beaufort, the general of all guitar techs. You don't have to tell him anything about guitars. Please don't. <laughs> and I opened the case, gave him the guitar, he looked at it, he took a deep breath, and he said, put it back in the case, come with me. And I, he took me on stage. He grabbed the guitar out of the rack, he gave it to me, he says, this is me, Carver. Hold it, feel it. Can you feel the difference? <laughs> there I was standing on that stage with a legendary guitar in my hands. The guitar that made history. And there on that stage, Pierre gave me a lecture of how Keith 
likes his guitars, how they should be. And on a picture, because I made this from a picture, you can see the feel of a guitar. And that key feel Pierre gave me, I have to take to the grave with me. It was made very clear. <laughs> yes. But after a while, Pierre said, even if you change all this in this guitar, I'm not going to take it. Because it's a copy of the real deal we already have. That's a gimmick for us. You understand? So I thought, now the story is over. I can go home. But then in the end, Pierre said, if you had to make one for us, make a black one. And I was flabbergasted because I heard Pierre say that he gave me an opportunity to make a black one. <laughs> How cool is that? So I got back home and made a black guitar with everything I felt on that stage. I wasn't allowed to take any pictures on stage, but then high sensitivity is a real blessing because you can feel everything. Well, in my opinion, I made a great guitar. It sounded great, it felt great. So I went to Rock Werchter to deliver the piece. And there it was checked by Keith guitar technicians. And it was to the test. They liked it. But there was one final hurdle to take. Keith had to like the guitar. Well, slightly. Interesting. So I waited for an hour, or two, three, four. <laughs> and then I heard my name called by Pierre. He said, Jerome, come with me. And he was not telling where we were going. And before I knew it, I ended up at the door with a black curtain behind it. Thank you. As I walked in, I saw the legend himself getting off his couch, straightened his jacket, my guitar, on his left. And he said, you made a great guitar. I like this neck. Wow, what a guy. This presence blew me away. His eyes have seen everything you can ever imagine. But he was the kindest of persons. And we talked a while about the guitar and how he liked it. Some pictures were taken, and he sent me off with his big wink. And I left with Pierre again, and I said to him, well, that was something. And then Pierre relaxed, and he said, you are my deputy tonight. And we went back on stage, and I became a roadie. <laughs> <laughs> really? I was setting up Keith Gear, placing his amps, and repaired a beverage table, and all that in front of a few with 65,000 people waiting for a show to begin. Wow, that's something. And after done that, I took a spot on stage where I could see the crowd, the crew, and the legends themselves, all within grasp. And after five songs, Pierre looked at me, and that look gave me goosebumps all over. Because he grabbed my guitar, tuned it, he gave it to Keith, and before I knew it, he was walking on the stage, starting the riff of the songs Doom and Gloom. This is something from television, so there's something extra in it. Want Keith gaat er dan ook op spelen. Ja. Dit is jouw gitaar. Je hebt nog niet gezien dit beeld. Let op. I was standing there, and I never knew that a body could produce so much adrenaline. Really. The legend himself was something I made with these hands. Wow. 
but you have to finish what you started. So with rubber knees, I had to take down the back line again, <laughs> rolled everything into the trucks, drank something with Pierre on that stage, talking about a great show. <laughs> and then I had to go home again. I didn't want to, but I had to. So I had a four-hour drive or something like that. And you could, if you can imagine how I must be in my car, So, two hours day later, I opened my shop again. And I sold a guitar string for one euro and 15 cents. <laughs> and back with my feet on the ground, normal life took over again. Thank you. <laughs>